Welcome to you if you're a first time or a new guest this morning. It's uh, just wonderful to be together again in the same room worshiping. And we want to give a very warm welcome to all our online guests. Wherever you're from this morning, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. 
Uh, I'm going to give us a, just a minute to turn around and socially distance, say hello to someone and welcome them here. I know we have some first time guests. We actually have a family from Nigeria who's here for the very first time, only two weeks in Winnipeg. So why don't you take a minute and turn around and uh, I'm going to invite you online to uh, go on the chat, let us know who you are and where you're from. And we would love to connect with you, or you can go on our website, gatewaywinnipeg.com, click on the guest contact card, fill it out, let us know who you are. We would love to connect with you and get you engaged in the mission of God that we're involved in. Okay, we have a great morning this morning. We have Pastor Peter Todd, who's going to be uh, speaking this morning on Rejoice Always, just two simple words. And I want to read a scripture to us from Psalm 145. Okay, the greeting's over. <laughs> we, got a, we got a train out of control here. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful to actually hear that buzz again. It's been so long. It was actually a year ago today, everything changed. I was in Thunder Bay. We had all kinds of emergency phone calls. Do you remember that, Pete? And then we did a video from Thunder Bay saying we were closing our service down. This is only our ninth in-person service in one year. And so we're so grateful you're here. And we have been praying the whole year that God would increase his manifest presence among us. And we're going to experience that today as Peter talks about joy. Psalm 145, one of my favorite psalms, says this, I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on the wondrous works, your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. That's us this morning and all your saints shall bless you. Mary, would you come up and pray for us as we begin? This is my wife, Mary, so we're in the same bubble. <laughs> so, Abba Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we, we meditate on you this morning, and we do extol you. We love your presence. We thank you that we don't just experience your presence in this little slot on a Sunday morning, but your word says we are always with you. Yes. That you hold us by our right hand and that you guide us with your counsel. We thank you for your omnipotence, for your wonderful works, but that you choose to dwell with your people. Yeah. That you have made a way to dwell with your people. You call us your sons and your daughters. You are always with us. We are always with you. Yeah. And so, Lord, we fix our eyes on, this, on you this morning mm -hmm. in joyful and glad expectation of what you're going to do. Amen. We know that every moment that we're with you, you change and transform us. Yeah. And so, Lord, we ask you to open our hearts, enlighten the eyes of our understanding to see you, to know you, to love you this morning and to be touched and changed by you. Amen. Amen.
Father, we really do need your breaking through in the church and in the world. And we believe that's exactly what you want to do. Break through with the gloriousness of heaven in individual hearts and minds and relationships and breaking through in the fear of the Lord upon the church and upon our culture. That your glory, your power, your might, your healing, your love, your joy, your peace, your grace, your beautiful presence might be our portion and bring hope to a world that desperately needs your hope, Lord. Amen. We're going to continue worshiping with our offerings. And uh, if you're online, you can do that by going on the website. All the different buttons and opportunities to give will come up. If you're here, you can use your phone and do finance at Gateway Winnipeg. Uh, dot com, or you can actually put checks or whatever in the boxes at the back. Let's continue worshiping with our offerings. And uh, I have a few announcements as we do that. One, we can actually take our masks off now if, as long as you're not moving around the building uh, and you're not singing. So if we're sitting listening, we're welcome to do that. We're so grateful for that change this week. We got our building permit for West St. Paul, if you haven't heard. <laughs> Glory to God. Came through on Wednesday, and so we're thrilled about that, March the 10th. Gateway 200 has started. That's our gateway path to maturity, and we have uh, 18 people in that, and we have Hearing God starting this Tuesday night. There's still opportunity for you to join Hearing God. It's our best foundational course at building confidence to actually hear God speak in a daily way to us. We already have 26 uh, people involved in that, and uh, it'll probably be over 30 by the time we start. So you're welcome to join that wherever you are in the world. We had people join us from Russia the last time and from Calgary. So it's one of those Zoom opportunities that you can tune in from anywhere. And we also have a family forum tonight 7 p.m. on Zoom. We're going through last year's budget, which we have a whole bunch of miracles to talk about, and we're going to talk about uh, this year's budget. I know it sounds a little boring, but it's not because it's all about vision. Money translates to vision, and that's why we're here, purpose, mission, and vision. And so uh, you can join that. If you got an email, it, the link is in your email, and the password's there. You can go on the website and put in the password as well. So there's two ways you can join. Okay, we're going to have our children's video. The fruit of the Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, you will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Joy. Woohoo! ice cream. This is going to be good. Ah! Oh. Hey, Armin, what's the matter? My ice cream fell on the ground. Hmm. Sounds like you need some joy. Thankfully, I was looking on the internet and I found this. The Joy Hat 4000! I've got a bad feeling about this. Now I just need to press this and... Are you sure about this, Micah? And pull this. This feels funny. Oh. Ah! Armin, do you feel joy yet? Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you guys doing? Giving Armin joy with the Joy Hat 4000. This isn't working. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. Try Psalm 1611. It says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. You see, Jesus wants us to find our joy in knowing him. 
A lot of things can make you happy, like ice cream, or being right all the time, or getting straight A's, or an autographed CD of the dream, dude. Baby, baby, baby. Or even a joy hat for a thousand. But those things won't last. The joy that comes from Jesus lasts forever. I never thought of it like that. If my joy comes from Jesus, I can be happy even though I don't have any ice cream. That's right. And he wants us to show that joy to everyone. Amen. We're going to be handing out joy hat four thousands at the end of the meeting. Anybody who like one? I could do with one every now and again, I'm sure. It's great to see you all this morning. As Ron said, my name's Peter. I'm one of the pastors here. It's been my privilege to serve here for uh, 29 years. And uh, now God's been so faithful to us in so many ways. And uh, we can always celebrate how good God has been to us. We've been working our way through a book that Paul wrote, a letter he wrote to a church in a place called Thessalonica, and the Thessalonian church. And I'm just going to look at a couple of verses this morning in Thessalonians chapter 5. I wonder if you were to think about who is the most cheerful person you know. Just think about that for a minute. Who's the most cheerful person you know? I don't know who that might be for you. I have a number of people uh, that over the years I can say, yeah, I've I've met these folks, I've spent time with them, and they just have a a cheerfulness about them, a joy about them that you just can't get uh, normally in the world. There was a guy that I knew back in England, and he was an, an older gentleman, and he came from Ireland and from Northern Ireland. And in those days, in the 80s and 90s, if you knew anything about what was happening in Ireland, there was a lot of uh, conflict. It was like a civil war going on uh, between people who wanted to be part of just a united island together and another group of people that wanted to stay connected to the United Kingdom. And so there was a lot of tension and a lot of violence and a lot of bad things that happened. And this man was caught up right in the middle of all of this. So he had a lot of pain in his life. He was on his own. Later in life, he had two sons that were big strapping lads. And each of his sons had joined a different side of the conflict. So you can imagine what their family was like. He was torn in two different directions, and they were violently opposed to each other. He had a lot of pain in his life, and yet he had a joy in him that you couldn't uh, understand in any other way other than that he knew Jesus, and Jesus had made a difference in his life. And it wasn't that he didn't have sad days and bad things that happened to him in those days. But he had little ways of encouraging himself. He had this little song that went something like this. There's a rainbow for every cloud in the sky. There's a rainbow for you and for I. The grammar wasn't brilliant, but the song worked. There's a rainbow that says, we're going to get by. There's a rainbow for every cloud in the sky. And he would sing this song. He would sing it to himself. He'd hum it. And this joy would come back into his heart. And I've very rarely met people who are as joyful as he was. But it wasn't because he didn't have any sadness in his life. He had a lot of sadness in his life, and yet he had this well of joy. And I want to read a couple of verses to you this morning out of the book of Thessalonians, which explain the sort of joy that Davy had. This is in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verse 16 and 17 and 18. It says this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's quite a statement, and we're going to unpack it a little bit this morning. And what I want us to understand out of this this morning is that permanent joy is found in person in Jesus Christ. Permanent joy is found in person in Jesus Christ. Christ. Before we look at what the Bible means by joy and what Paul means by joy here, it might be helpful for us to understand what he doesn't mean. First of all, he doesn't mean that joy is an absence of pain. In fact, in his own life, he had lots of pain that happened to him. He wrote to a church, another church called the Church of Corinth. Let me read to you what he wrote. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, explaining what goes on in his life. Afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights. All right, Paul, we get the message, right? But he's still going. Hunger, dishonor, slander, 
treated as impostors, feeling like they're dying and punished. Wow, what a list of suffering and pain. But as part of the same sentence, he says this, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Listen to the extent of those phrases. Sorrowful, full of sorrow, yet always rejoicing. Joy is not an absence of pain. We have some great examples of that right here at Gateway. Those of you in the South Congregation, you'll know Mary Dirksen very well. Mary lost her husband many years ago to cancer, lost one of her daughters to cancer. Right now, she has family members that are wrestling with cancer right now. She's had lots of other struggles and pains in her life, and she has her own pain in terms of her own physical health and her eyesight failing, not able to read the Bible, which she loves to do and see the people she loves so much. Yet you only have to spend a few moments in the presence of Mary Dirksen to understand that she has a joy that you cannot explain by her circumstances. Joy is not an absence of pain. Joy is not a presence of gain. Jim Carrey, who some of you may know, an actor and a comedian, a Canadian, brought up in Canada, grew up in a lot of poverty. In fact, for a period of his life when he was growing up, his family were homeless. But then his comic gift got known. He got fame, fortune, riches, and wealth. And you'd have thought that after all of that, and he thought that he would have happiness and joy. But this is what he wrote. I think everyone should get rich and famous and do whatever they dreamed of so they can see it's not the answer. Joy is not an absence of pain. Joy is not the presence of gain. Joy is not even being fulfilled and fruitful in our lives and what we do. Sometimes we think, oh, if only I was more fulfilled, if only I had a job or a place that I work or something that makes me feel better and and, and uses my gifts better, that would bring me joy. You can even think that way as a Christian. If only I had a greater ministry effect and I was able to reach more people or I was able to, to teach more people or whatever your gift might be, then I would have joy. You only have to look on the internet for the very sad instances of people who have grown huge ministries by their gifts and talents, preached to thousands, hundreds of thousands following them on the internet, big churches, and yet their lives sometimes just fall apart. Something they go looking for somewhere else in the wrong well never gets stopped Never gets brought into the light that it can be brought into the light and, and, and healed and sorted out. Whatever they were doing in ministry, it wasn't covering all the bases for them in terms of their joy. Fruitfulness and, and being able to do everything you want to do in the sense of I'm, I'm making a difference, I, that does not bring you joy in and in, in of itself. That's not what biblical joy is. What Paul is offering us here is a different type of joy. Let's look at what it actually is. What do we learn from here? There's three things I want to bring to you this morning out of these three verses. And the first is this, that permanent joy is the will of God for us all. Let that sit in your spirit for a minute. Permanent joy is the will of God for all of us. Listen to what it says. Rejoice always. There's permanent joy. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. God's will for your life is that you will have permanent joy. And if you don't believe that, you only have to look at the creation that God has made. This is why the mountains are so majestic. This is why birds sing. This is why flowers are so beautiful. God didn't just make it for himself. God made it for us to enjoy. You know, every part of God's planet has its own particular joys and beauties. When I came to Manitoba, one of the things I totally appreciated was the sunrises and sunsets. We have some of the best sunrises and sunsets in the world. Lydia's going to throw up a picture I just took a few weeks ago, just from our doorway into our backyard. The Bible says in the Psalms 
that God makes the going out of the morning and the going down of the evening to shout for joy. God has put joy in his creation. And he wants us to enjoy him in the creation that he's made. And when God knew that we were going to take his creation and we were going to hurt it and break it and even destroy it and all the joy that he'd put into our world in relational life and in all that he has given us, we were going to mess it up. God made a plan for a new heavens and a new earth. And Ron was preaching about that a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't heard those messages, go and listen to them. That's our future if we know Jesus. God made a plan for a new heaven and a new earth where there would be no pain, there would be no hurt, there would be no sin, there would be no brokenness, there would be no cancer, there would be nothing that would destroy our lives. Perfect joy forever. The psalmist says this, you have made known to me, Psalm 16, the paths of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Permanent joy is God's will for all of us. And can I say it's God's will for everybody? God doesn't want anybody to perish and miss out on the wonderful life that he's prepared for us. And if today you don't know you're going to that wonderful life, if something happened to you today and you left this earth, you don't know where you're going, you don't know that the new heavens and earth is for you, I'm going to help you today to find out how you can access that. You can leave here today knowing that you have access to the permanent joy that God wants to give us. Now, you and I might think, well, that's not really my life. Well, I've already explained. God's joy it does not mean an absence of pain, but it is made available for all of us in our lives. What else can we tell from this verse? Permanent joy is the will of God for us all. But secondly, permanent joy is found in a person. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. There was a writer uh, in England in the last century, probably one of the greatest writers in the last century. The Times newspaper gave him a column and said, you can write whatever you like every day. We just, we trust you. It's going to be brilliant. He was a humorist. He was a broadcaster by the name of Bernard Levin. Bernard Levin had uh, brought up and grown up in a Jewish family. He looked at all sorts of different faiths during his life. There was no suggestion that he ever became a Christian or gave his life to Christ. But on one of his columns in the article in the Times, he was writing about joy. And he said, the greatest joy giver that ever lived was Jesus Christ. And he's absolutely right. Jesus was introduced to the world as a joy giver. The angel Gabriel came to Mary. Mary, who was going to be the mother of Jesus. And he greeted her. And if you look at the text, it says greetings in most of our translations. But actually, the word is exactly the same word that Paul uses here. It's rejoice. He showed up with Mary. She was worried about what was going on. He says rejoice. And why could he tell her to rejoice? Well, because she was going to meet Jesus in person. Jesus was going to be born in her womb. Joy was coming to that lady. She went to visit her cousin, Elizabeth. Elizabeth had a baby in her womb that was going to grow up to be John the Baptist, full of the Holy Spirit, even in his mother's womb. And when Mary, with Jesus in her womb, came into the room where Elizabeth was with John the Baptist, John the Baptist, Elizabeth said, my, my baby leapt with joy. Can you imagine that? This little baby curled up in a womb suddenly feels a presence suddenly feels a person has walked into their existence. They go, yes! Can you imagine that? That's what happens when Jesus walks into the room. The angels appeared to the shepherds on the hillside. They were scared. Don't be afraid. We bring you good news of great joy 
which will be for all the people. To you in the city of David is born this day a baby. And they went down to see baby Jesus and they were filled with joy in person meeting him because his presence brought them joy. Bernard Levin called him the greatest joy giver that ever lived because of the way that he turned people's lives around. Nobody else before or since has made blind men see, made lame men walk, cleansed lepers, raised people out of their tombs. Jesus was the greatest joy giver that ever lived. And if you asked him, where was that joy coming from? He said, it's my joy. It was in him. He knew that it had come from his father in heaven. He knew it was the Holy Spirit at work in his life. But he said to his disciples, I want you to have my joy. It's in me to give. And I want to give you my joy that your joy may be full. So did Jesus, because he was the greatest joy the giver that ever lived, walk around this earth with a big smile on his face all the time and big happy and everywhere he went, everybody was a big happy. Well, we know that's not the truth. In fact, Isaiah, the prophet in Isaiah 53, prophesying about the Jesus that was to come, said he would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with suffering. And he really was. He wept over Jerusalem when they didn't turn to him. He wept just to see his friends weeping because of of a man that had died that was dear to him. He wept in the garden of Gethsemane, almost like drops of blood. He was so in agony as he was facing the cross that was coming before him. And then he went through that cross, the torture, the shame, the betrayal, the whipping, the beating, the nails in the hands, the crown of thorns on his head, the spear in his side. He understood what it was to have grief and suffering. And at that moment, you would think, well, that's the end of joy. They've taken the greatest joy giver that ever has been, and they've killed him, and they've crucified him in the most horrific ways. But Jesus had told his disciples that this was coming. And when he told them, they were all sorrowful. And he said to them, yes, you're sorrowful now. But he said, you're going to see me again. And when you see me again, you're going to rejoice. And nobody is going to be able to take your joy away from you. And that's exactly what happened. On the third day, Jesus rose again from the dead. The disciples were locked away in a room. They were so scared. When the women came and told them that Jesus is alive, they didn't believe it. There was no joy erupting there yet until Jesus came to them in person. And he walked into that room where they were, even though the doors were locked. And Jesus, the greatest joy giver that ever lived, brought them joy, and that joy would never leave them. Jesus actually left them. Forty days later, he went up into heaven. And you'd imagine again, they're thinking, well, he's going to leave. Now the joy leaves if Jesus leaves. But Jesus said exactly the same thing to them that Gabriel had said to Mary. He's about to leave, and he says exactly the same word. Again, it's often translated as greetings in Matthew chapter 8. But the word is rejoice. Rejoice. Why? Why? He said, you can rejoice because I'm going to be with you always, even to the very end of the age. I'm going to be in person with you. He knew he was going to go up into heaven and the very same spirit that gave him all that joy, the wonderful Holy Spirit, he's going to release him down onto the earth so that wherever they went all over the earth, they would have the well of joy right in their hearts. Permanent joy is found in a person, in Jesus Christ. You might say, well, Peter, that's all very well and good, but how do I access that joy now? How do I find that joy? You know what's going on in our lives. You know what's happening. It's COVID. There's things that have happened here. People have lost loved ones. There's lots of pain that's gone on in this year. What do we do? How do we find joy in the middle of all of that? You know, when Jesus went to that cross, that wasn't his pain he was carrying. That wasn't his grief. That wasn't his suffering. Let me read to you what Isaiah says as he carries on talking. He says, surely he's borne our griefs, carried our sorrows. 
He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Jesus, in the most astonishing way, when he went to the cross, absorbed all the pain, all the hurt, all the suffering of every generation that has ever lived on himself on the cross. Your pain, my pain. Your suffering, my suffering. He carried it all. And if you're thinking, that's, that's just too ridiculous. That, that's not even possible. How can one person do that? Let me tell you this. One person created it all. It all came from him in the first place. It all came through him. By him, all things were created. It came out of his very being. He created all things beautiful with joy and gladness everywhere. We brought the sin in. We brought the pain in. We brought the suffering in. What does God do about that? He sends his only son, Jesus, the one through whom everything came. He goes onto the cross and he absorbs back in all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the bad things that have been done to us and all of the bad things we have done to other people. And he nailed them to that cross. 2,000 years ago. Your pain has been carried. Your suffering has been carried. Fully. You know, some people lose a loved one and they don't know when the grief should end. And in some ways, sadness goes on and the memories go on all the way through life. But there is also a very great truth that Jesus has carried all your grief. He's carried all my grief. He's experienced it. He's paid for it. It's all done on the cross. Jesus is the greatest joy giver because he's the greatest pain reliever. He's the greatest pain taker. And if we want to access his joy, it starts with us releasing our pain to Jesus releasing our suffering, our sorrow, and the pain we've caused other people, our sin towards God, towards other people, releasing it to Jesus, that he carried it on the cross for us. But then when Jesus rose from the grave, he rose for us too. The beginning of a new creation, the beginning of the new heavens and the new earth, pouring out into the world that he's just taken all the pain and the suffering from, his goodness and his love and his grace once again, leading us to glory with him forever. When we go into heaven, the moment we walk into heaven, our pain will be gone. Have you ever figured, tried to figure out how that works? How can it go? Like I might even recognize people in heaven and, and know people. How can I be without pain? You will be without pain because Jesus absorbed it all. You will be without suffering because Jesus absorbed it all. You will not even have the scars. There's only one set of scars in heaven. And that's on the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the earth to take away all of our sin and our sorrow. Permanent joy is found in the presence of a person in Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus today, we're going to give you an opportunity to come to know him. You can ask him into your life today. Very simple prayer. He will come in, in person. He will meet with you by his Holy Spirit. He will minister his joy into your heart, even in the midst of great trouble. You can be full of sorrow and yet rejoicing. How do we do that, Peter? I've got one minute 20 to tell you. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What Paul's saying here is that to rejoice is a me choice. To rejoice is a me choice. Doesn't mean putting on a false face, a false laugh and trying to be happy, but we can choose to walk and to work with the joy that God gives us. 
Back before the summer, uh, last summer, we got away for an, a night, and one of the days when they were opening it all up, we went up to Pinawa and we got on a lazy river. Anybody been on the lazy river in Pinawa? Any hands on the television? No, well, you've got to do it. Beautiful sunny day, you go up, you get yourself a, a raft, and you get on that river, and it just floats you for about two and a half hours. You just lie there, and you float down the river and whatever. The only problem is sometimes it gets a little shallow. Sometimes you're going to get moved over to the side, and you can run aground on some rocks and stuff like that. And all you have to do is keep kicking yourself back into the river. And once you go back into the stream, away you go again. That's what Paul's saying. Joy is available because it's a river. It's not an emotion that comes out of me. That, that comes and goes. It's not a mindset. It's, not, it's a river that comes from God. It's the Holy Spirit. It's his life flow. And his life flow is there in each one of us as believers. And sometimes we just have to kick ourselves back into the middle of the river. We're feeling the sorrow. We're feeling the heaviness. And we don't know what to do with it. Bring your sorrow. Bring your heaviness to the cross of Jesus Christ. Stand looking at him. There's my pain right there. It's not on here anymore, it's up there. Lord, I give you my pain, and Lord, I help me to kick my way back into your river of joy. And he gives us two very simple ways to do that here, and there's lots of others. Pray without ceasing, he says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know what uh, Julia and I have been going through over the last few months? And uh, we haven't been able to get our, all our um, updates out to you. Uh, so we apologize for that. Things kind of come and go pretty quickly. She had a surgery. Uh, it was mostly successful, but there were some things that were left. And so uh, as things stand, we're going for another surgery next Monday. And uh, this has not been the year that we planned for, right? None of us planned for COVID. None of us planned to lose our dads or our brothers or whatever. We did not plan for this. But back in January of last year, Ron had been encouraging us to write down God's answers to prayer. So Julia and I started a little prayer journal. It's, a, it's like a coffee-sized book, table-sized book that's on our table. And we started to write things down in black. And when they were answered, we would write in red. When I was doing the sermon on Thursday, finishing it off, I went and counted it up. 168 answers to prayer. What in a, in a year when you've been through, you've prayed, I'm sure you prayed that your dad would get through. I'm sure you prayed that Julia's brother wouldn't die of the banging his head on the floor like he did. I, I, you know, cancer would go and all, all these things. Yeah, there's been, and there's been miracles even in those. But we have had 168 answers to prayer this year because God is good and his love endures forever. And he pours out his grace on us every day. New every morning is his faithfulness. And when you count the ways that God has been good, it kicks you back into the middle of the river. Life has got so many bumps to it, doesn't it, on its road. And I know some of you this year has been really tough. And you, you put your pain up against other people's pain maybe and think, well, that's not that great of a pain. But some of you who live on your own, you've had to do it more this year than ever before. And there hasn't been an answer for it. People have made choices about things. Grandparents. I've talked to grandparents who've struggled because their kids have had to make choices. Do I, do I meet with my siblings and their children or do I meet with my parents? And, and people are making choices about what they do. And, and everybody's saying, yeah, okay, we understand. We have to do that. But it's painful, isn't it? You want to be able to be with people and gather people around. And we've had lots of pain this year. What are we going to do with our pain? And how do we find the river of joy? I want to encourage you today that permanent joy is God's will for all of us. That permanent joy is found in person, in Jesus Christ. And that to rejoice is a me choice. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Some of us like to walk and listen to the birds. That's what puts us back in person with Jesus. Some of us like to pray in tongues. Some of us like to put our music on. My mom at home, she, she's got these folks on the YouTube. She puts on last thing at night before she goes to bed. It's probably better than a lot of some of the things that we could watch before we go to bed, give you a better night's sleep. It's better to go to bed in person with Jesus, isn't it? If you want a good night's rest. Joy is not the absence of pain. You can have joy in Jesus right in the middle of it. 
And I want to close this morning. I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to us today. So I'm going to close. So I'm going to, before I do, I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus this morning, that's where it starts. And I want to encourage you to do that. And I'm going to pray a simple prayer because all we have to do is ask Jesus. He said to his disciples, you know, you've asked nothing yet in my name. Ask that you may receive. Why? That your joy may be full. That's in John chapter 16. So we're going to pray a simple prayer. I'm going to ask you just to pray along with me. You know the power of this prayer, some of you. Some of you might be praying it for the first time. If you're at home today, God is with you. The Holy Spirit is right where you are. He's there as a fountain of life. Joy in the Holy Spirit. That was in that children's video this morning. It was right on. In his presence is fullness of joy. And if you want Jesus in your life, you pray this prayer with us this morning. Let's all pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. I turn from everything I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and rose from the dead so that I could be forgiven and set free. I receive your forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, whether online or here, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get in contact with you. You can go to our website, gatewaywinnipeg.com, click on our uh, guest contact card and leave us your name number. We'll get back in touch with you. We'd love to talk to you about that. I'm going to close the meeting here now, Ron, unless you think there's anything else we should do. I'm going to close the meeting here now. And so if you need to go, you go. If you need to go um, as well, when we bless you, you go. I'm just going to pray a closing prayer. But if you need the Holy Spirit to minister to you today, you know, sometimes you need other people to help you back into the water. There's that story of the man who was crippled beside, you know, the, the, the fountain. And, and when the angel stirred up the water, there was healing in the waters and everybody else could get in and he couldn't get in. He needed someone to get him into the water. Like Jesus got him into the water without taking him into the water. <laughs> Jesus got him into the real water. Sometimes we need other people to help us to get into the water. I do. I, I don't know where we'd be today without you guys praying for us. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We need help to get in the water, but there is water. There is always water. And so if you need to get into the water today of the Holy Spirit and his joy in your life, I'd encourage you just to stay, just to stay at home. And we're just going to minister in the Holy Spirit together. Let me pray and release those of you who need to go or want to go now. Father, I want to thank you. I, what you did on the cross, Lord, it just blows my mind. It's so incredible. How could you take the sin and the pain and the suffering of an entire world and carry it in one moment, except for the fact that you are God? And Lord, you did that with our pain. You came to take our pain away and carry it, Lord, so that you could then be our joy giver and release us life. And I pray for everyone here, everyone at home, you would help us this week, first of all, Lord, to recognize and believe that joy is there for us in the Holy Spirit and to help us to know how to kick ourselves off the rocks, Lord, when we need to, to get back into the river of your flow of life. Lord, I pray you'd help us with that. Bless us with joy overflowing and full of glory, even in the midst of our suffering. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, if you need to go, please feel free. You're not disturbing anybody. Uh, the meeting is closed if you want to go. But if you want to stay, I'm just going to ask the worship team to come up. And we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to touch us today. I believe that Jesus wants to bring He wants to bring us back to the cross today. Because he wants us to know how much he's done for us. Not just my sins forgiven, not just, I mean, all of that's wonderful, amazing, amazing, amazing. But we've just been through a rough year. And Jesus has already carried it all.
And I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit that he would open our eyes to see Jesus this morning. And that I'm going to encourage you, whatever your pain may be, however big, however small, whatever it is, just to acknowledge it before the Lord. You know, there was a man called um, Joshua, uh, sorry, Joseph uh, Crivens, I believe, who came to Canada in the early 1800s. He was a, a man who'd been through many troubles. He was going to get married in, in Ireland where he came from the day before. The day before he got married, his fiance fell off a horse and drowned in a river. He came to Canada. He was going to get married to a lady in Canada, and she got pneumonia and died. He was so heartbroken, he gave away all his money, and he had wealth, and he gave himself for the rest of his life to looking after the poor. Um, his mother got ill in 1855. I get this. He couldn't get home to be with her in the midst of her pain. He was so broken. He had no money left, and he didn't know what to do. So he sat down, and he wrote a little verse. And he sent her the verse. What a friend we have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We're just going to play quietly here. Whatever you need to bring to Jesus, whatever burden, whatever hardship, whatever pain, whatever suffering, I can't promise it's going to take it all away because you'll still feel stuff. But I can promise you that you have a burden bearer who will come alongside and he will walk with you and he will reintroduce you to the river of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I just ask you right now, that, Lord, you would come and you would meet with us online, Lord, where people are, here where people are. We come to you again, our great burden bearer. Surely he carried my griefs. Surely he carried my sorrows. By his stripes, we are healed. Holy Spirit, would you just minister to people as they release their burdens to you this morning in Jesus' name. Just in the quiet of where you are, you just do that. Speak to the Lord. open your hearts up and your hands up before him on that cross just see him just pulling your pain in just absorbing it onto his body on that tree surely he carries our griefs we release it to you Lord Jesus this morning we cannot carry it ourselves we have no grace but you do Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Holy Spirit, I pray that as people begin to release their pain to you, I pray you would bring healing. Lord, there are people out there, Lord, their whole body aches because of the pain that's in them. It's like every bone aches in their body and they know there's nothing wrong with them physically. It's, it's just the grief. It's the, Lord, I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, release your healing. From the top of their heads to the bottom of their toes. You know, the Lord said to me this morning, Peter, I took it from the bottom of their head to the bottom of my toes. I had a crown of thorns on my head and I had nails in my feet. From top to bottom, I took the pain. From side to side, I took the pain, hand to hand. There's nowhere you have pain that I did not take it. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that that healing stream would begin to flow again. 
Lord, some folks have, haven't felt your presence for so long. Lord, would you minister right now? Just in close, Lord, and personal. Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord does that. We're just going to come back into starting to sing parts of that graze into gardens. Again, if you need to go, go. But there's nothing, no one like you, Lord. Just quietly. He turned my morning to dancing. You know, the Bible says that pain lasts for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, there's pain. Yes, there's joy. stand together.
that one message and one little touch doesn't always solve everything, does it? You go away and some of us still have stuff we deal with every day, but there's always a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. And God is here by his Holy Spirit. God wants to pour out his Holy Spirit all over the earth in incredible healing. And the pain and the suffering that we've all gone through is for a means and for an end to turn us towards him, to turn our nations towards him. And he is gonna pour his love out onto us and in us and through us. Sorrow comes for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sorry, Ron, what do you want me to do? If you need prayer this morning, I encourage you to come up and pray for you. Yes, nobody wants to go anywhere. That's okay. You can leave if you need to. If you don't, we're going to sing 